practice, man, practice. That's what you gotta do, practice. I actually started out professionally in 1952. Uh, called myself playing professionally, you know. I cut my first 45 in 1958. But in 58 was a good year for me. I mean, what more can I say? I like, I, my 308 spinning reel, I still got, I still got my flying V. A lot of memories, a uh, style of guitar playing, and everything I got into then with a lot of the, the twang bar and all that, you know. I had a manager by the name of Charlie Daniels at the time. He you was know, a fiddle player. Me and Charlie's good friends. And uh, the guitar player with the uh, Stones had just died. And uh, he just asked me, like, you know, if I'd be interested in taking his place, you know. I didn't want to be casually number two. <laughs> I was working at a club called the Ponderosa in Houston, Texas. This was like in 1967, the last part of, well, actually it was 68, the first part of 68. And Ken Heat and them played at a place called the Music Hall, and they were looking for me, so Light and Hopkins told them where I was playing at. So they come by and talk to me, and, and when uh, they asked me about coming to California. I said, yeah, I would. So I came out in 1968. The first job I played was Fillmore West. We played one time, I remember, at the Fillmore. My first time I ever played the Fillmore East. And I was breaking in a new drummer and a whole new band. And we didn't have any rehearsal. And we was opening up for Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And Bob Dylan and the band, a whole bunch of people were there to see us. You know, and, uh, so here we go on coal. And, no rehearsal, nothing, you know, and it was, that's the way it was, you know. All right, G, three chords, <laughs> you know, okay. C, <laughs> three, three more chords, you know. Maybe four chords in this one, you know, I mean, and everybody would know. So we just played long songs and screamed and hollered a lot and jammed about you. But uh, basically, that's what this kind of music is, is simplicity. If you gotta think about it, you know, uh, you're doing it wrong. I did, I always played around like locally, you know, and um, so I didn't let it go completely. I just couldn't travel and, you know, I didn't have much time to, to create the things that I wanted to do. I didn't have, you know, with kids crying around the house and they want to play guitars next year, it's hard to practice, you know. I get just as much from the audience that I give them to them, you know. They, sometimes they give me more, you know, than I feel like that I give them. You know? But I, I play a lot with my heart and soul. I mean, I, I, I play from the soul. I like, I love to play. Things change a little bit, but the roots of it are, seem to still still hold in, you know, when you're, you're st you stay with one thing long enough. They always say, if you stay with it long enough, it'll work. You know? And I think I've stayed with this one for a long time. <laughs> It comes to like, people ask me like, what would be the ultimate guitar playing to me? The ultimate thing to me would be like when I can have it like a religious experience where, you know, like uh, it used to be in church, you know, um, where I can listen to it back and get goosebumps and, you know, feel like there's a, a spiritual presence there, you know, then I know I've done the right thing. I left the country for so long. The thing about the Carnegie Hall concert is that it brings together the spectrum of blues and blues rock music. What we've done is, is get together with those artists, find that they're still making really killer music, in fact, probably some of the most passionate, mature music um, in rock and roll um, that's available, um, and put them out in front of the public again. So basically what I did was I took Roy Buchanan and I took him out of retirement and I put him back in the music business. My associate Jim had the idea for doing this, uh, um, this guitar concert, uh, which uh, was quite exciting. It was uh, pairing uh, Roy Buchanan with Lonnie Mack and uh, Albert Collins.
it wouldn't be as strong a show if it were if it were uh, Lonnie Mack and Roy Buchanan and Greg Allman or Johnny Winter. It wouldn't be as strong a show if it were Albert Collins and, and Coco Taylor and Lonnie Brooks. It would be wonderful music, but it wouldn't express the way this tradition has grown and what this music has come to mean uh, to an American public who still want direct emotional roots music. Someone's gonna hurt you like you hurt me Further on down the road Someone's gonna hurt you like you hurt me Further on down the road Baby, you just wait and see no, I was just saying, you know, we've been, been traveling all over, man, all these years on the road and missing each other, and, and this first time we ever got to sit down and play together, you know? And uh, well, I've seen him down there before, but me and Roy, we'd sit, we've been... Almost meeting you know? at least half a yeah. dozen times and just yeah. and never got around to it until... Every time we go in, I always like, want to meet you. I always love you. Well, you know, a lot of places, I, you know, go and play it. Uh, Y'all coming or uh, just left? Yeah. I've loved both of them forever, man. I've been listening to all their stuff, and, and Bruce finally gave me all of uh, Albert's records. I got all of them, and when I was uh, getting ready to cut cut the album for for Alligator, you know, I sat at home and listened to all Albert's stuff, you know, getting my chops back up on blues and listening to it, you know. That's what drove the old lady crazy, man, sitting there. She said, man, I'm tired of listening to that. I said, well, I'm gonna listen to more, you know. <laughs> and and Roy, man, you know, I've known him forever, but I never met him, like I say, and I've just, just been following him around. And, Love his music, man. I like especially the old stuff, man, back all the old stuff you used to do, you know? Well, thank you. Yeah, well, you know, you got you gotta stay stay out there forever and you gotta love what you're doing, you know. Because if you don't, it'll kill you. It'll still kill you. <laughs> Just play forever. And, uh, well, you know, I've been playing all my life, and like I always say, I'm a lifer. And I know both these guys are, too, you know. And we've all been playing forever, and it's like, it's, it's all you do. You know, I took a couple jobs and tried doing some straight jobs for a while, and it bored me to death. So I get to the point, you know, where I ain't happy at home, and then I get out on the road, I stay out too long, I ain't happy out there, I want to go home. You know, but, uh, that's it. You gotta keep doing it. When I was working with these guys, I think they're two of the greatest blues musicians that's ever lived. And it's really an honor, you know? And I think you know, this Carnegie Hall gig is gonna be like history. Hey, 
experience for me. I like that. I never thought I'd play a place like Carnegie Hall. I felt like going out and kissing the floor. You know, I think that uh, Caruso was actually here. Uh, okay. Give him hell. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate this. And this is the highlight of my life, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you so much. I was so mad, 
I just had to laugh. I could see in my mind on a horse like Charles and Bill. I hate to check my mail, but all Steve Bills keep coming here. Mouth the charm. Don't get too much on the bill, dear. No, I'm not trying to tell you how to spend your money. Yes, I know, but that $500 I owe already. That 28% is killing me, baby. I don't make but $200 a week. Yes, I know, dog. I beg your pardon. I ain't buying my mother-in-law nothing. I'm sorry, darling, that, that, that slip. Mother-in-law, sorry about that, dear. Charge it. Take your time. Come over here and talk to you for a minute, baby. Charge it. Albert was in Lubbock at Fat Dogs. Um, uh, I'd gone out with a friend of mine, Stubbs, from a barbecue place, and we went out uh, to listen to Albert and uh, made cold chills run up my spine. Uh, I've, I'd heard his records a lot, but uh, there's something about feeling the dust coming off in an amplifier that uh, changes it all up. So when I heard Albert Collins, I said, this is, this is, this is even more unbelievable. That tone, you know, there's something about that tone that just kills you. It's like a, I like to think of it as like a, a little slugger, baseball bat. Somebody hitting a home run and that bat cracking. When Albert hits the strings, that's, that's what it reminds me of. I've broken a lot of fingernails trying to play like Albert Collins. <laughs> Trouble, 
That sun is gonna be days like this.
First time I saw the Iceman was in Palo Alto, a little club down there when we used to live out in the Bay Area. And uh, he plays that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Albert tunes his guitar a little different than everybody tunes the G-string and down the third. And uh, I just remember trying to figure out what the hell he was doing, man. I can't wait to get on the same stage with him. Yeah, it's an honor to me to play with him. I would love to, if I don't do You're it. You're really putting the pressure on us, man. <laughs> We're working musicians, and we can't talk.
cookies. It's a pleasure to be here at Carnegie Hall, I'll tell you. It's been a long time coming. This is for all my friends from Indiana over there. This, whole show. this is one that I did with Stevie Ray Vaughan, and uh, he couldn't be here tonight, so I'm going to do it by myself. A little bit of this in the monitor, if you would. Thank you. Go something like this. Chocolate on my fingers, icing on my lips, sugar diabetes and blubber on my hips. I keep the nightlight burning in the kitchen, baby, so I can go downstairs and cruise. I got them Oreo cream sandwich. Chocolate covered cream filled cookie blue. I hide them in the cabinet. I keep them in a jar. And for emergencies, you know, I keep them in the glove compartment of my car. And I can't live without them. They get me high and I can get on boo. Them Oreo cream sandwich, chocolate covered cream filled cookie blue. Let me see if I can play with that. says I'm crazy, you better give them up and quick. Or you be pushing up daisies because, boy, you definitely sick. But I couldn't quit if I wanted to. No, I don't want to lose. Them Oreo cream sandwich, chocolate covered cream filled cookie. By the bisco, ain't no rookie no. Next best thing to nookie blue. It was in 1969, and I went into my first recording studio in Mount Healthy, Ohio. And on the wall, it was a fella named Rusty York. This is Texas. <laughs> a fella named Rusty York had a studio, and I was. Uh, very nervous to say the least and went in and this was uh, the home of Lonnie Mack my uh, guitar idol and we walked in the studio it was a little two-track studio back then and uh, recorded this stuff I was 18 years old and uh, my hands were shaking the whole time because when I had uh, picked up the guitar at the age of nine years old uh, the first thing I learned was uh, Memphis you know, 
Lonnie Max Memphis, and I just, uh, I just always uh, thought he was the greatest. He still is the greatest. Think I fall back in love with you. Looking up, feeling down, hanging around this uh, same old town, doing things like I used to do, like. Falling back in love with you Cause you got the power to make me do Anything you want me to Power over me when I'm a falling back Stay and play with Don. be wrong, you know, but the feeling's right, and tomorrow we might even have a fight, but tonight what I'm going to do, I think I'll fall back in love with you. Kissing slow, Ray Charles on the stereo, holding on but letting go of falling back. You say Jimmy, 
Sure. Jimmy, let me say two words to you. Okay. Lonnie Mac. Lonnie Mac. Down, 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 down. Lonnie's important because he was one of the start. He he was one of the main people that started a lot of musicians like myself and other people playing music. I heard Lonnie when I was 14 years old at a club in Newport, Kentucky, and uh, looking up, watching him sing uh, further on down the road and songs like that. That's, I, that's when I realized that's what I wanted to do. I started playing right after that. I used to have a girlfriend in like 1968, 69. She used to work at Electra, And she used to get me all these Lanny Mack records. And I was nuts for the guy because, I, I mean, I don't know why. Maybe if I had a million records, I would think differently, but I don't know. I had four records. They were all Lonnie Max, and I love them. These guys are not like household words, like Duran Duran, etc. I said, well, I'm from Southern Ohio. And if you're from Southern Ohio, Lonnie Mack was a legend. He was a legend. He was the best there was in those days. And that's how I grew up. If you listen to uh, the solo and hang on Sloopy, you'll hear that it sounds an awful lot like Lonnie Mack, probably. <laughs> but that's why I'm here to hear Lonnie.
Lonnie Mack is one of the uh, right there. one of the people who plays it simply right. God, I was getting so tired of. I mean, God bless the Beach Boys, but when you're <laughs> when you're a blues guitar player, you know you really we. I was really getting tired of Little Deuce Coop and and all the Beach songs and Louie Louie and which are great songs, but you know I'm talking about guitar playing and stuff. And here came Lonnie Mack, right? I was I was playing in Indiana too with a group called the Jokers at the time, and here come Lonnie Mack right down the middle of it all. <laughs> God, what a breath of fresh air that was for me.
Thank you. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> you was cooking, brother. Well, my, you know, my fingers get stuck on that one I got in there, I couldn't get out of it. I thought that was a new lick. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my fingers and they were just doing this, and I was like, uh, 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 I can't quit. Cody, first, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Jody, come on, Jody. Stand by. We are still re racking. <laughs> Playing asleep at the wheel was just formed, and we were playing in Washington D.C. 
And a friend of mine said, you got to go out and see this guy in Bladensburg, Maryland, at the Crossroads Bar. And uh, his name's Roy Buchanan, and he just plays. And a guy named Danny Denver had the band. And we went down, and Roy was playing guitar there. And he was playing uh, with his amp turned around so nobody could see the dials, you know. <laughs> and uh, he was just playing his ass off. And uh, after we were living in West Virginia back then, and uh, the guys from, let's see, that was Savoy Brown, the big English bands. Everybody had heard about Roy Buchanan. And, it went down, and the night I was there, I remember uh, Savoy Brown was there, the Rolling Stones had been there the week before, and and uh, I went in as a kid, a kid, and I went backstage, and I sat out with Roy, and uh, uh, he showed me some licks, you know, man, I was just just amazed, and, he's, and I had long hair and everything, he's, and I said, yeah, I got a country band up in West Virginia, and he said, oh, you mean they're letting hippies play country music now? <laughs> I said, yeah. Anyway, uh, he was the rage. Every guitar player in D.C. would go down there and just, you know, stare at him and, and dig his stuff. Shut up, dog. Not, for me, it was never just hip, hip, hooray, let's go on the road. It was a very lonely place to be, too. And so it, I was forced a lot of nights, as opposed to spending it with somebody I would enjoy being with, I'd spend it with my guitar. And uh, it teaches you something, that desperation. You know, you don't play casually. You're not sitting around casually playing. You're playing. You're, you know, when I first started uh, learning to, to play the guitar seriously, um, it wasn't casual at all. I was. It was. 
violent, blind ambition, you know. I just, you know, I, I felt very aggressive about it, and I didn't pick it up a little here, a little there. I was put in a circumstance, too, that I was very young, of, of going between being, you know, someone who had a little knack for it to, to being able to hold my own am amongst some giants uh, at the time, and Roy Buchanan being one of them. another time Ronnie was thinking of this again. Maybe he was thinking of firing me. I don't know. I can't remember right now. But anyway, Roy came around, and I think this was like the second time that I'd, I'd ever met him. I didn't really hardly know him, and I saw him just play a little bit. But uh, he came, and we were playing, and he was sitting in. And this guy was like a gunslinger uh, coming up to, into the town, right? So. He got up and plugged in, and he looks at me like, you know. And so I thought, OK, you want to dance? Let's dance. And, and I was just at the stage where I was starting to get pretty good. You know, I was still very young, you know, maybe 17 years old, I think, by then. And, and he did this thing, like, we started to play. And we were going to, like, swap solos. And he did this thing where it was like he was tuning the guitar while playing. And it was like Bruce Lee swinging around one of these things before he fights you. You know, it's like by then you're, like, horrified already from this. This man is just done before your eyes. So he did, like, all of these tricks, you know, weird sounds and bending things down and bending the neck and everything and playing with volume controls and and it was very a very frightening experience for me but uh, but he was a great guitar player from the beginning I mean it was like I don't know if he's any better now I think he was as good when he was born as he is now Thank you. 
Music's over. It's time to turn out the lights. You know the blue's gonna go home with you. Yeah, and it soothes you through the night. You get the strangest kind of feeling. Yeah, when the guitar plays. You know your body's gonna get the message. Your neck's gonna put you right back in that groove. Sing it,
you very much. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, on the same stage, would you welcome, please, Albert Collins, Lonnie Mack, and Roy Buchanan! Pretty bad. Someday you're gonna be crying. Yeah, you're laughing pretty bad. Someday you're gonna be crying.
pretty babe Someday they're gonna be crying 